Hi everyone, I'm Shannon Haruk and I'm a Customer Success Associate at Zano. I recently started and as part of our onboarding process, we were asked to complete a build project and present it to the team. A build project is an opportunity for us to take any application or problem that we want to and build a back and forth in Zano. Through this process, it gives us an opportunity to empathize with our customers and what it's like to learn the product and face some initial challenges. And it also allows the team to see our individual personalities as we get to choose what we want to build. And it shows how excited we are about our particular area. In this video, I'll be chatting through my build project, how I thought through my function stack. And for context, I don't have a technical background. So thinking through my function stack required me to think about what I was building through first principles and then finding each step and its equivalent in Zano. The third thing I'll be going through is my greatest learning from my build project, which is the importance of variables and the power of them in Zano. I love all things logic, puzzles, and games. So I built a calculator which calculates the number of unique pairs that can be made from a given number of things. I then also built a practical application of how this is useful, meaning how the calculation of unique pairs are useful in real life. Let's say we were hosting a tennis tournament for the top 10 men's players in the world. One of the things I'd want to know is how many matches I'd need to organize. Let's say if each person were to play each other once. And the second thing I'd want to know is what would the pairings look like in each of those matches? The first calculator I built answered the first question. It helped me demonstrate how many matches would need to be played given the number of people. So in this example, we have 10 people. And with 10 people, we'd need to organize 45 tennis matches. And again, that's if each person were to play each other once. Now, the next thing we want to know is what are those pairings? So I took a list of the top 10 players from the most recent ATP rankings and fed them into a list of items in my second calculator that I built. So here we've got the top 10 current players. We can see we've got a list of unique pairings. It's Pas Djokovic, Rune Djokovic, Rublev Djokovic, etc. And in total, we've got 45, which matches with the count from our first endpoint that we went through. Now, I'm not a technical person. I don't have a technical background. So when I set out to build these calculators, I wasn't exactly sure right off the bat of what steps or function steps I'd need for my function stack in Zeta. But what I did remember from high school initially was this uh, equation here, which was part of combinations and permutations in high school. And I remembered that given a number of things, so in our case 10, that we want to group, and in our case group into two. So we want to group. 10 things here into groups of two, we're able to use this formula to calculate how many number of unique possible groupings there are. I don't really know the background of this formula. I just remembered in high school that it worked. So I use this formula as a basis for my function stack. First thing I tried to do was break it down into logical and repeatable steps and then find the equivalent of those steps in Zeno. To rebuild this equation in Zano, I knew I needed two things. One, the functions, i.e., what are the transformations that are happening in this equation? And two, the dynamic values. What are the numbers or the values that are being transformed in this equation? So I'm going to show you how I went about thinking through this for the numerator. For those of you who haven't been to high school in a while, 10 factorial is basically 10 multiplied by all of the numbers smaller than 10. So we've got 10 by 9, by 8, by 7, and every single number up until 1. I needed to find a pattern in this to then input into Zeta. So I further broke it down into 10 being 10 minus 0 times 9, which is 10 minus 1 times 8, which is 10 minus 2, and so on. So this is essentially the function, this part here. We're looking to subtract a list of things and then multiply the result of them together. So now, what are the dynamic values? 10 is a very familiar number because that's the amount of tennis players we're interested in. So 10 is essentially our input, the amount of things we want to find 
and turn into unique combinations. So I'm just going to put here tennis players. How about the numbers that we're subtracting from it? Zero, one, and two, three, four, so on. Zero here is essentially an index. What is an index? An index is the position of an item in a list. So if we have a look here, for this first bracket, we can say this is at index equals zero. Just so you know, indexes or indices in Xano start at zero. For this one here, our index is one. Here, our index is two. So we're saying this first bracket starts at the zero position. It's our zero item or number one. This here is our second item or i equals one, the index is one. And this here is the third or e index equals two. So what we've got is our zero, one, two, the subtraction number is actually an index. So all in all, I was able to identify a pattern. And that pattern was for a list of things, we want to subtract the index from our input. So we want to get to 10, we want to get to nine, we want to get to eight. And then when we have all of these numbers from our subtraction, we then want to multiply the result from B. Breaking my bill down into a narrative helped me identify what it is I needed to do in Xano. I had a list of bracket pairs. Whenever you have a list, think that you need an array in Xano. For each bracket pair in the list, I wanted to subtract the index from the input. This meant I needed a for each loop. And for each item in the loop, I wanted to use a math filter to perform the subtraction. And thirdly, I needed to multiply all of the results from step two together, meaning I wanted to find the product of an array. Using this language and a narrative can help you deconstruct what might seem to be an overwhelming build. Some of the language is very similar. List means array, when you want to do something on each item in that list, look for a for each loop. One of the biggest learning points for me as I created my build project was about the importance of creating and updating variables in Xano. When I first heard about variables, I couldn't quite understand what it was about. It was explained to me as a container of information, and I couldn't really quite picture what that meant. If you're like me and you've started off with Excel, Google Spreadsheets, Airtable, or maybe even a bubble backend, you may be used to creating more data as you're trying to manipulate current information that you have. Let's have a look at this example. In Excel, if I want to manipulate the information in column A, I need to create more information in column B, C, and so and more columns if I wanted to manipulate it further. What this means is I'm using more storage as I'm trying to transform what it is that I have. In Xano, we can change the information that's in column A without actually having to write more data. We do this by creating and updating a variable. Here's how I simplify the concept of variables in Xano to myself. Let's say you already have a home and you want to extend it by building a few more rooms in the back. You could immediately build the extra rooms taking up more space on the land, and also creating real relationships between the first house and the additional rooms that you've built. Or you could take the data or the information, the structure of your current home, and conceptually think about what it would look like if you were to add more at the back. This is what a variable is. It keeps what you already have as it is and conceptually builds onto it as you define your business logic. It doesn't affect the records unless, of course, you save to the database. The great thing about Xano is that you can call on your variables that you've created into real life through your API responses. Thank you for being an ace and watching this video. I've learned a combination of things throughout my build journey, and I hope some of the tips and tricks can help you get your start in Xano. If you have any questions or queries or just want to get to know us more, 
please reach out to us in the Xana support chat, the Xana community, or weekly during our live office hours. Thank you so much, and I hope to see you soon.